Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski with Relax Health. We're going to go over the top five topics from 2025 heading into 2026 when it comes to the under-recognized restless legs syndrome or RLS. So the big number one issue in 2025 was the release of the 2025 guidelines by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. These clinical practice guidelines was a, a systematic review and meta-analysis of all the literature up to the point of about 2024. And it was put together by a, a group of seven physicians assigned by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. The big thing with this uh, new set of guidelines is it sort of is a 180 degree reversal of the previous guidelines from 2012. The dopamine agonist medications, pramipexol, ropinirol, and the less used transdermal rotigotine and even levodopa are now recommended against in, for the standard use in the treatment of restless leg syndrome. Pramipexol and ropinirol have been long the first line treatment uh, for RLS, but due to a phenomenon called augmentation, which is a severe worsening of RLS where symptoms start to come on earlier and earlier uh, in the evening and into the daytime, symptoms getting worse or symptoms even spreading throughout the body. These medications have not been found to be good for the condition, causing damage to the dopaminergic system long-term and creating really an iatrogenic form of RLS that is far worse than the original condition. These medications have not been considered first line for the past decade, but now the American Academy of Sleep Medicine has found that based on the research, which includes up to 70% of individuals on these medications for 10 years will develop augmentation. So the vast majority of individuals taking these medications long-term will get worse and somewhat permanently worse. So these drugs are no longer recommended for standard use. Most of you watching this video should not be prescribing them. And this is the big uh, point with the new guidelines. The guidelines had, uh, based on the research, have installed four strongly recommended treatments. Three of them are gabapentinoids, gabapentin, gabapentin enocarbil, and pregabalin as three first-line drugs, along with one form of IV iron called ferric carboxymaltose, which are all considered strongly recommended treatments based on the systematic review and meta-analysis. So that's the big uptake from 2025 in the new guidelines is that getting the information out that the treatment plan for RLS, starting with patients who are newly treated, should not be put on dopamine agonists in most circumstances. Topic number two that is a big point, I just mentioned it, ferric carboxymaltose. IV iron is playing a much stronger role in the treatment of RLS. RLS is caused by low iron levels or poor iron metabolism in the central nervous system. And treatment with oral and IV iron are now the mainstream, uh, the, the main treatments for first line use uh, going forward. So right now, based on the guidelines from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, anyone with a transferrin saturation less than 20% or a ferritin of less than 100 should be getting IV iron. If the ferritin is below 75, oral iron could be considered and ferrous sulfate did receive a conditional recommendation in the guidelines. But the, the biggest point here is that all people with clinically significant RLS should have iron levels regularly tested and they should be aggressively supplemented at least above a ferritin of 100. Increasing research even from this past year has shown that even 100 might not be enough for some individuals that they would benefit from getting the iron levels to normal, or high normal, or even slightly high for the serum so that the, it penetrates into the central nervous system and really relieves the underlying source of the RLS symptoms. Topic number three, and this, this is another big one from 2025, is the widespread prescribing and use of the perineal nerve stimulator device, also called tonic motor activation. 
So this is the first recommended non-pharmacological treatment uh, for RLS that has uh, come out and been recommended in the guidelines. There have been two randomized sham control trials that show good efficacy of these, this device. In short, it's two cuffs that are worn below the legs. It, they both deliver high frequency stimulation and they could be worn right before bed or when symptoms come on. And they're not uncomfortable, so patients could fall asleep with the stimulation and it activates the lower musculature and sends a feedback to the brain, sort of like walking, how walking relieves RLS. These devices basically do the walking without the patient having to get out of bed and walk around. So it's a very exciting treatment. It's at the time of this recording, the device is now available in almost all states in the US and hopefully spreads out uh, to other countries uh, outside the US, but it uh, is the first really evidence-based non-pharmacological treatment for this condition. Topic number four is ongoing research uh, into the opioid system. So Dr. Brian Ku at Yale uh, has been working on the melanocortin system, uh, endorphins. There are tremendous deficiencies in the opioid system in those with restless legs syndrome. And this sort of starts to suggest why low dose opioids are so highly effective for this condition. With many individuals, perhaps the majority of those, at least in the US, with augmentation from dopamine agonists, opioids are required for treatment in a lot of these cases because they're the most powerful treatment dating back to the 17th century. So this ongoing research on opioids is helping to support why low dose opioids are effective. Dr. John Winkleman at Harvard uh, has published and is working on publishing the fifth year of the National RLS Opioid Registry, which has tracked 500 individuals uh, who have been on opioids for RLS. And his research supports that there is good uh, efficacy and safety long-term of the low-dose opioids with far more than half of all individuals on the same or lower dose of their opioid after the five years being monitored uh, through this study. Historically, long-acting opioids have been the mainstay. Buprenorphine is emerging as the go-to opioid for first-line treatment because of its superior safety, Schedule III uh, controlled substance, so it's easier to prescribe than the classic methadone. But buprenorphine and methadone uh, remain among the first agents used by RLS specialists and the wider uh, group of individuals who need to be treating people with refractory RLS. So number five is sort of looking into 2026 and some of the issues facing restless leg syndrome. Dopamine agonists have been very easy to prescribe for many years. They're not controlled substances. They work right away and they make patients worse over time. And it's very hard to get people off the drugs due to the severity of the chemical dependence on these dopamine agonists. So the medical field is now going to be more and more aware of this with these new guidelines coming out. And the RLS Foundation will be putting out their own expert opinion algorithm for more advanced treatment uh, approaches than what a, a meta-analysis uh, could uh, provide, which is just based on randomized controlled trials and, and high quality studies. So we'll see how the medical field grapples with this. One is creating awareness that dopamine agonists are generally not recommended except in rare circumstances, moving to oral and IV iron, moving to gabapentinoid medications, but then also what to do with people who are on dopamine agonists. Most uh, who are doing well uh, should be monitored very closely for augmentation. Some may want to taper off slowly the dopamine agonist before they develop augmentation. It's easier to taper off before they're in a state of crisis. And then what to do with individuals who don't do well on the first line therapies, if they don't tolerate gabapentinoids, if IV iron infusion doesn't work, what are the next steps for clinicians? Is it to move to a low dose opioid like a buprenorphine uh, or a methadone, or is it to to continue to look at other more experimental treatments like different types of seizure medications 
that have yet to be proven for this condition. So we have reached a new era when it comes to restless leg syndrome. We hope that uh, it brings about uh, long term with fewer people on dopamine agonists that this condition as a whole, the next generation of those with RLS have milder and milder conditions because of the hopefully elimination of augmentation over the next decade. Uh, I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health, and this was the 2025 into 2026 year in review. Thank you.